Hey guys, welcome to Madera Farms. My name is Amelia and I am so glad that you're here. Today is going to be a very, very busy day in the kitchen. We are baking 23 loaves of sourdough bread that have to be ready for tomorrow's pickup. I changed how I'm doing things as far as this micro bakery goes. I am only doing pickups on Thursdays and Sundays except for if there's huge orders or I'm catering for something. Um, I did like a little teacher's luncheon. I think it was on the last video I talked about that. I took bread to them as kind of a thank you for all the hard work that they do in our communities and for our kids. But besides that, all of my normal orders and customers pick up on Thursdays or on Sundays. So we are gonna get started. I'm gonna walk you through everything that I'm doing. And I hope you guys can see that even though sourdough does take a lot of time, if you do it in this way, you can get it done pretty quickly. All right, first we are going to use warm water and we're gonna put our starter in. I always use warm water. For me, it just feels like it gets activated pretty quickly. And you can see I still have some of my starter left in my vessel and that is going to be what activates my next feed. So even though I'm using quite a bit in here, I still have enough left that I can make it active and start baking my next few loaves. All right, the next part is to put in the flour. So if you know anything about sourdough, it is very basic. It is water and flour and salt, that's it. And then when you add your inclusions, obviously those other ingredients will be added in, but your base is pretty basic. So once you get this down, you can start playing with different flavors and all the things, but I really, really suggest working on getting your basic loaf down so that you can do it just by feel. You don't have to worry about measurements. And then you can start adding all the fun things to it. Um, I am going to start mixing this all together. So what I typically do is I put in a bunch of flour, I start mixing it, and then I'll add more flour as needed. Like I said, previously i put in the amount of water and the amount of starter that the recipe calls for and then i will adjust my flour accordingly so i feel pretty good about how this looks when you're working with bulk dough it's still pretty sticky um, so i'm just going to go ahead and cover it and then we'll see how it does on the first coil fold we have to refeed the starter because I have to make more dough today, but you should always refeed your starter after you use it. I just put in, I think I put in two cups of water and four cups of flour for this um, because I obviously need more starter so that I can continue baking. One thing I've noticed a lot with my starter lately is that it is pretty dry as well. So I added a little more water than what the recipe calls for, just so it's not paste. But I am really liking using these silicone spoons for mixing my starter. I've always used wooden, and then I realized that these silicone spoons really scrape down the sides of my vessel. Now you're working with a lot more flour and a lot more water. And when you start working with those amounts, you really have to go on feel because I was really going through my recipe and just quadrupling it and all that stuff. And though it was okay, um, I noticed that sometimes, I, even if I'm buying the same flour, sometimes it took a little more water to get it fully hydrated or it would be a little too soupy even though I'm using the exact same measurements, the exact same flour, it just really depended on all the conditions. And I think a lot of times it's, um, if I have my wood stove going in my house, it tends to dry a little bit more. So I have to use a tiny bit more water, both in my starter and in my recipes. So I will put all the information. Um, this is the first six loaves. I'm going to start I just fed my starter. This will be ready to use in about two or three hours again. My starter is very active. So in about two or three hours, I'll start the next batch and then um, those will just work the exact same. But I wanted to let you guys know that because if I give you this recipe and for some reason your dough's not looking like mine, it's still wet, it's too dry, it could really be the conditions you're working in. So what I always suggest is do the right amount of water, do the correct amount of starter, get that nice and bubbly, and then start adding in your flour and 
go from there. I would add in a little less than what the uh, recipe says. At times I don't even go by my recipe as far as measurements because it fluctuates so much. So I have my timer set for 30 minutes. In 30 minutes, we are going to put some salt into this. Um, I have been experimenting with different salts. I'm not going to experiment on this. I'm just gonna use my regular um, salt that I have been using because this is an order, <laughs> these are orders, and I don't want to experiment on orders. <laughs> Once I nail down using the different salts, I can then incorporate it into customer's orders. But for right now, I'm just keeping things as they are because it's working. Okay, now it is time to add our salt. And salt is really easy to add. It's literally as many tablespoons as you have loaves. So this is six. I put in six tablespoons of salt. And you can see it's still pretty sticky. But what I want to remind you is this salt is going to pull out some of that moisture. So even if you get to this part and it's sticky like mine, I still think that it's fine as long as it's forming a little bit. If you can see, my dough is not like soupy. It's not falling apart. It's still keeping its shape. Now I am going to do my first coil fold. I did wait a half an hour after I put my salt in and I am just scraping down the container and then I am going to pull up in the middle of the dough and then I'm gonna fold it over top of itself. And then I'm gonna pull up again in the middle and fold it over. And then you're gonna turn your tub a half a turn, do the same thing. You're gonna pull all the dough kind of towards the middle, and then you're gonna pull up in the halfway point, fold it over itself, pull up again in the halfway point and fold it over. Then you're gonna turn your tub another half turn quarter turn <laughs> and then you're going to go ahead and repeat that process as you can see already the dough is starting to get a little bit more stiff and easier to work with and this is only going to get better as we continue to do these coil folds one thing that i do recommend is making sure your hands stay moist while you're doing the coil folds that'll help prevent it from sticking so much to your hands so this is the last, I think, coil fold that I videoed, um, but you can see here how it's just easily pulling off the bottom of the tub compared to our first one. And this is so nice because you're not stretching it way up in the air. You're just kind of keeping everything right in the tub. And you can see this dough is looking so nice. And you wanna make sure your towel is damp. You don't wanna put a dry towel over your dough. So now we wait. When you're working with bulk dough like this, your wait time can vary. I know it can vary with just one loaf on its own, but when you have bulk dough, it's going to speed up and you might think I'm crazy, but I've noticed that when I have ingredients of six loaves in here, um, I can pretty much turn this dough out and put it in the refrigerator within four or five hours. It does not have to wait the full eight to 12. If you can let it wait that long, definitely do it, but don't let it overproof. When you notice that your dough is getting so big and so full, it's gonna overproof, and then when you go to cook it, it's not gonna look the same as it would normally. So just keep an eye on your dough. I like to come check it every hour, hour and a half. I just peek at it, see what it looks like, and then once I notice that it has some nice bubbles on the top, that's when I'm like, okay, ready to go. We can start putting this into the Bannetton baskets and getting it into the fridge to cold proof. There's a few tips that I wanna let you know when you're working with this dough. The first thing is stretching and folding bulk dough gets very challenging because you have to stretch it so much. It really starts to like roll over on itself anyways. So I do suggest trying the coil fold. You don't have to do a coil fold when you're working with a single loaf, but when you get to something that's four or five loaves, I would try doing the coil fold. It just is easier on the dough. It's not pulling the dough so much. It's just using the weight of the dough to create that, um, that gluten, that tension. So a coil fold, I think is a great idea if you're going to be making bulk amount of dough. The other thing that I would highly suggest is getting yourself a food grade tub. I was kind of against it and then I started getting four orders and five orders and six orders for the same day and I realized that I was cleaning so many bowls and it was honestly like the worst part of it. I hated cleaning up after myself and I was like this isn't worth it. I'm spending an hour cleaning up after myself and these bowls are just getting so gross that I can't keep them clean. 
And so I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on people who use food grade tubs. The one that I have is actually, um, I think for like, what do they call it? Bus boys or something, but it's all I could find in, I needed it like that day. So I went to GSF and I grabbed it. It works. It's fine. I do need a bigger one. I do need something that's a little taller because I am trying to work six to eight loaves at once. And you can tell already that this is like, so this is where we are already. And it's definitely going to rise higher than this. So that's where it kind of gets concerning. I want to show you guys doing those coil folds. You can see there's already a lot of like bubbles on the top of the dough and that makes it start to ferment quicker in my opinion it starts to rise a lot faster and you don't have to wait that 8 to 12 <laughs> hours and if you're working in a time crunch like I am today that is really really helpful so we will pick you guys back up when I start to form these doughs we'll talk about flavors we'll talk about what I do to do all of the inclusions um and yeah we'll go from there Okay, so my plan to use that tub again didn't really work out. The dough is still fermenting. It didn't look quite the way I want to, so I'm just going to do more in bowls, which at the beginning I told you I hated doing because I don't want to clean all this, but you got to do what you got to do. So I am just putting in my starter, my water, and my flour, mixing it all together and making sure I'm getting this very sticky, doughy consistency. And then I'm going to let this sit with damp towels over top for about a half hour. Then I'll add my salt and do my stretch and folds. We're going to have to go ahead and feed our starter again because we're going to need to use it. Tomorrow we're going to test out a couple recipes, but I am just feeding it. I think I put a cup in here of water and then two cups of flour because I don't need that much for tomorrow. I just needed enough to make sure that it was fed and I could use it to test out a few recipes. But as you can see, it looks exactly the same as it did before. I'm just going to go ahead and put my lid on it and set it on the counter. Now it is time to turn out our bulk dough. It's getting pretty late. I think it's close to 10 o'clock at this point and I am getting tired. <laughs> um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to chunk off a piece of this dough and I'm going to put it on my scale to measure it out. I want to make sure that my dough is even so that each loaf is pretty much the same. Now I'm going to start putting in my inclusion. So there's a few ways you can do this. If you have one flavor, I'm going to call them flavors, <laughs> um, you can do it when you're doing your coil folds. You can put all the ingredients in and that'll mix it really nice into the dough. For this batch, I had a bunch of different flavors. A lot of people are ordering different specialty loaves, so I couldn't do that. If I wanted to do that, I would have had to use probably five or six different containers to bulk ferment my dough, and I just did not feel like doing that. This is a little behind the scenes of what it looks like in my kitchen when I am working with dough. And if you work with dough yourself, you know it can be very messy. So this is the next morning. I am clearly still in my robe, <laughs> and that's the fun thing about working from your house. You can still stay a little bit comfy. But for my specialty loaves, I only do one expansion fold right on the top. I think it shows off all the flavors inside and it makes it easy. All right, guys, I am wrapping up the baking for today's video. I have a lot of them cooling here. I have some packaged. I have a few more in the oven and then I think I am pretty much done. All I'm going to have to do is wait for everyone to come pick them up. I do my pickups on Thursdays and Sundays. On Thursdays, I do from two to seven. And on Sundays, I usually do from like four to six, just because I know most people are able to pop in um, whenever. If they have to come a little earlier or a little later, that's perfectly fine. I just ask them to shoot me a message. But I hope this encourages you to start your little micro bakery, to start baking for your community, to start sharing the love of sourdough, because truly that's what it's all about is involving your community and being a little bit more sustainable. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and I will catch you in the next one. Bye friends.